boys and girls, children of Buddhist Sunday School, parents, grandparents, teachers of Sunday School and moral education. May you all be well and peaceful. Now today we are going to tell you another Jataka story entitled The Invaluable Treasure. Now the word invaluable means a lot of value, very, very precious. Uh, treasure, you know what it is, a treasure. Uh, uh, very, very precious thing like gold, diamonds or money. Uh, uh, people value highly uh, the treasure. So this is that big treasure, valuable, right? And Jataka fail for reflection. It's very important to know the Dhamma that we can learn from this Jataka stories. So let us, as usual, launch the our point. Now, this is the cover slide, and uh, let us stop the, the video of my appearance. Now, I'll explain the story. The pictures are taken from a Jataka comic book, and I've added some animations or pictures, right? So as you can see, this covers like the valuable treasure, a treasure with a uh, fantastic high value. Uh. And this picture here shows the river flowing through the city of Varanasi. Of course, you see Varanasi, a uh, very old, town or city in India, right? So uh, then you find uh, during that time, they have the boats, uh, the, something like Sampanna. Uh, it's a very unique place. Uh, you see it afterwards. Uh, this is another uh, picture for the story. Actually, there will be reference to a king's palace, uh, right? And uh, this it just gives you an idea. King's Palace can be very, very big uh, during that time also, and it's probably it's very near the main river, which is the River Ganges, right? Very important river in India. Now let us look at the next slide. Now reflection. The reflection means to ponder, to think over carefully, contemplate so that you can learn important life lessons and Dhamma. Uh, that's the meaning of reflection. Uh, this person is reflecting, uh, thinking. See? The invaluable treasure. Now, in Varanasi, there once lived a water carrier. Uh, just now I told you, Varanasi, a city in India. In fact, it's the second oldest city of the world. The old name was Benares. The oldest city uh, is found in the Middle East, uh, right? Syria. Damascus uh, supposed to be the oldest city. Varanasi is the second oldest city. And uh, the old name was Benares, but the modern name is Varanasi. It's a very fascinating place because it is near this Varanasi in this place called Sarnak uh, that the Buddha gave the first sermon, right? Uh, the Dhamma teaching, uh, the first sermon of the Four Noble Truths. Uh, so there was this water carrier, you know, quite a poor man, and his job was to fetch water from the river and then, uh, you know, to deliver the water to villages nearby, uh, people who need the water. Uh, so he earned that living. Uh, now you can see some uh, picture here of the video clip uh, of uh, Varanasi, a uh, very fascinating place just by the river Ganges. You know, right? uh, okay, let's go on. Though he worked hard, he barely earned enough for two meals a day. He was very, very hard working, uh, making many trips to fetch the water uh, using his boss to 
like the water from the river. But he hardly earned enough money uh, to, you know, just get the basic two meals a day. Uh, uh, to take two meals a day. Tough life, isn't it? Right? But however, there was one lucky day, he managed to earn an extra money. He earned a little extra money. You know. uh, usually, you know, not much. Just hardly enough to buy the meals for two uh, for a day. But this time, he got extra, he earned uh, extra. Probably somebody gave him a bit more, maybe. And you know how much extra? The currency is called one paisa. One paisa is just a coin, uh, Indian coin. Uh. Probably maybe at most, uh, maybe equivalent to uh, one dollar coin in uh, Malaysia. So it's, uh, you know, not a huge amount, a very small amount. But during that time, you know, even two, three cents, all this, uh, or probably a very, very uh, worthwhile reveal. Uh, so he was very happy uh, to get that extra paisa, uh, one paisa. So what did he do? So he wanted to save it to hide this thing he considered his treasure. Uh, right? He was a very poor person. He said, where shall I hide my treasure? Then he went to, you know, the place huge building uh, with walls. Uh, probably he was part of the king's palace. Uh, right? A very, very, uh, you know, very, very big building with a high wall, you know. So then he looked at the wall and then he said, ah, or he was thinking, it will be safe behind one of these bricks. He knew that, you know, in a wall of bricks, uh, you may find some Bricks which are quite loose are not probably not properly cemented on, so it could be taken out lah. So he said, oh, if I can find one brick where it's loosened, then I take it out and put my hidden treasure there lah. Ah, the treasure is just one coin, ah, the paisa, alright. So let's see. So he began to search lah. He gently tapped at the bricks. He began gently to tap uh, because if it is loose, uh, then uh, it will have a different sound, a more hollow sound compared to one that is already uh, very tightly and fixed uh, or cemented. Really. So he found a loose brick right through the sound. So he took off the brick ah, and he put the, the treasure, uh, his treasure, the paisa, into the a cavity or the hole, right? But he must remember which of the bricks uh, was the one that he put the treasure, isn't it? So he very smart also, he memorized uh, it's the first brick to the left of the northern gate. So you have uh, one side, they call it the northern gate. He's quite, he's quite familiar uh, with this area. And then now uh, he said, it's to the left. Uh, so that means, sir, uh, I must remember the northern gate, left hand side of the northern gate. This is the northern gate. So we so put we put the the coin into the uh, hole or cavity, and then you put the brick back, lah, Right? Nobody would know, isn't it? Secret place, lah. And then he remembered also. The tenth one from the ground level. That means counting upwards, number 10. Uh, and then on the left hand side of the northern gate. So you could locate it easily, isn't it? I say, ah, the place will be easy to remember, you know. So it's very, very happy. Lah. That was the only time he had earned a little more than he absolutely needed. He had never had such luck before. Oh, no wonder he was so happy. Uh, he kept thinking about it. My treasure is safe there. I'm a rich man. Even though it was actually just a small amount of money. But it was considered extra uh, to what he usually would earn enough for the meals. Lah. So he saved it. Lah, right? Ah, uh, so very, very happy. The years passed by. Huh? Oh, they didn't say how many years, a few years passed. And then he married a girl who also worked as a water carrier. So the wife 
also had the job as a water carrier to fetch water from the river and then to sell this water to the villagers. And uh, they built a hut near the southern gate of the city. Uh, so you see, you have the northern gate of the city and then the southern gate, right? So you knew the direction. Uh, uh, so you can recognize which part of the wall, uh, right? His coin was hidden. Uh. So one afternoon, you know, what did the wife say? I wish we could go to town this evening to attend the fair. Maybe like a fun fair or pasamalam type. La. But we don't have enough money. Then this man, the water carrier said, of course we do. I have money. One paisa. I've hidden it away in a safe place. Oh, I told the wife the secret. La. This is a marriage. La. And what did the wife say? The wife said, I too have one paisa. You know, the, probably the wife has saved also one paisa from her work as a water carrier also. So if you bring yours, all together we will have two paisas. Then we have enough to enjoy ourselves uh, to go to the fair. Uh, then the husband agreed to say, I will go now and bring you my treasure. So you're very happy, you know. So, what did he do? So, he started to run. The time, uh, no motorbike or car, you know, you have to use your legs uh, uh, to make that journey, you know. So, the wife, they come back soon. Uh, they, yes, yes, I'll be back at once. After retrieving or taking back the paisa, which he had hidden at the wall. Near the northern gate, the left of the northern gate, remember? Wow, it was summer. You know, in India, you have uh, three seasons are uh, the summer, and then you have the rain period, right? Then you have the cold season. So, summer uh, around, usually around May or uh, June, very, very hot, right? And um, Temperature could reach until 45 degrees Celsius, you know. It was terrible, man. It's terrible. But now it's still like that, you know. So you know those days when we went for pilgrimage, we wouldn't go during the summer. Very too hot. So we went uh, during the you know the cool season, the, the winter season. Uh, and uh, it was uh, November or December. Uh, very, very cool and nice. Uh, so it was a summer season and the midday sun was blazing in the sun. Blazing means uh, burning hot, you know, oh, bright, dazzling, and it's scorching, very hot. And uh, nobody would want to go to the street, you know. So no one was to be seen on the street because it's so hot. People would be inside the house taking a, a nap or whatever, except the water carrier. But he was very happy. He was running with a song on his sleeve. He was singing uh, because he was looking forward to the treasure. Uh, then he managed to locate the wall, right? As I told you, you, uh, you could find the northern gate and the southern gate. Uh. So the whole city uh, probably uh, during that time uh, was enclosed by this wall. So he said, ah, oh, only a little more distance to go. He could recognize that he had to run there, you know. Uh, Ah, oh. so around that area was the king's palace and that king was named King Udaya. And what was he doing? He was relaxing in the palace balcony and he saw the water carrier, right? So his palace was, of course, inside the wall city. Lah. And he was surprised, you know, to see under the blazing sun, the man uh, running like this. So he was wondering, the king, I wonder what makes him run at this time of the day. So hot. But he yeah, is looking very happy. Very, very happy. Of course, at time, you know, no fans are. So you have to be fanned by the, the court, the ladies, uh, the servants, and so on. It's a king, you know. So what happened? So he sent word. That means he 
commanded his guards, right? And then told the guards to go and bring the water carrier to see him. So these guards, you know, armed with their spears. So went out into the area where he was running, right? Under the scorching, blazing sun. Hey, stop, stop. Ask this man to stop on the guards. So what happens? Let me go, right? Because uh, one of the guards uh, sort of held on to his hand. He said, the king wants to speak to you. Come, you let me go. Uh, so he didn't want to follow, you know. But you see, you know what, he what, did, what did he tell the, the guards? Uh? He said, I have more important things to do. I have no time to meet the king. <laughs> He was so concerned about taking his treasure, uh, the paisa. What a simple man. Uh, he doesn't know so many things. Don't you realize it is an honor to be taken before the king? The guards had to use force, you know, because when the king uh, gave the command, uh, he must be followed, you know, king's orders. So the guards had to use force, uh, uh, to take the water carrier to the king. Uh, so he had no choice. Uh, so he, he, these guards were armed in the fight. So he couldn't fight them. So no choice. Uh. He had to go to visit the king. So when he went into the palace ground, right? So then he had to face the king. The king was seated in their throne. Uh, at the time the throne was like that, you know. So the king said, the earth is like a furnace, yet you run and sing. Don't your feet burn? He said it's the summer season and the, you know, the road. Uh, at the time, they don't have the tarmac road. It was just probably hard clay or, you know, the type of uh, blackish soil or whatever. And it was, it was, it's so hot, like a burning furnace. A furnace, you know, is a structure where people, you know, Maybe uh, put in coal to have a high temperature to melt, uh, even metals or furnace. Wow, yet yeah, you run and you sing. Don't your feet burn so hot? And then you know what this water carrier said? It is my desire that burns me, not the heat. Uh, you know, he replied, there is my one thing, my strong one thing. Uh, that is burning inside me to do something, you know, not the heat that is burning me. Then the king was surprised to hear this answer. And what is your desire? What is it that you want so strongly that is even uh, hotter than the heat? Then this water carrier said, My desire is to retrieve, or to get back, now. retrieve means to get back. My desire is to retrieve my treasure hidden behind a brick in the northern wall and to make my wife happy. So he was very honest. He told the truth. He told the truth. So that was why right, he was running happily to get the treasure to him. So the king was quite interested. He said, wow, disregarding the midday sun, you run from one end of the city to the other. Right, not, not quite a distance, you know, around the city, quite a big city. So you didn't bother, huh? you were not disturbed by the hot sun, you know. You run from one end to the, of the city to the other. Is it that your treasure consists of a hundred thousand gold coins? No, la, not that much, the water carrier replied. Then the king persisted, 50,000, 10,000? No, not that much. The king asked if it were a thousand, a hundred, fifty thousand, or ten thousand, oh, sorry, ten gold coins only. But the water carrier each time should be said, no, no, not that much. Then how much is it? Your treasure? He said, it is one paisa, my king. Wow. The king was so shocked and the other people in the court and the guards, uh, the servants and so on, uh, were laughing and uh, one paisa. He says, uh, as I told you, maybe equivalent to just one dollar Malaysian uh, currency. Uh, uh, very small amount of money. Right? 
One paisa. The king said, yes. But during that time, of course, I could buy certain things. Then with that money, I can buy a lot of things for my wife and make her happy. Ah, he said that. Right? Just like those days, when we were young as students, five cents, we could buy so uh, you could even buy chi chong pan already, you know. Uh, and 10 cents, 20 cents, uh, you can get wow, more bowls of curry already. 10 cents, uh, number, right? So that time uh, was like that. Uh. My friend, the king was very kind. He said, You don't have to run to the northern gate so far away to get one paisa. I will give it to you. Uh. So you, the king, uh, so rich with uh, thousands and thousands of uh, gold coins, isn't it? So they one paisa, I'll give it to you, right? So what did the man say? So the king uh, took out the paisa and here, take this and go home. Uh, this man said, uh, very grateful. I will take what you give me, but I will go and get the other coin too. He still wanted the other paisa also. You know? So the king said, my friend, don't exert yourself. It's so terrible to run under the hot sun to the northern gate. Huh? Now I will give you two paisas. Lah. Uh, two paisa. Then this water can say, I will accept them all the same. I will get the other one too. Uh, he, <laughs> didn't have wisdom also, lah, right? Simple man. Lah. Right. I will give you ten. Lah. Please return home. Uh, the king told him, uh, please return home. Ten, you know, as he was. Only it was only one paisa hidden there. He said, I'll take the ten, ah, but the other one too. He still wanted to, that one, you know, right? Maybe he was maybe quite attached to it, lah, right? He's so attached, and the king also realized this. He's so attached to the one paisa he has saved. You know? But poor man, no, you have to run all the way to the northern gate to get it. Ah. And then, uh, so hot sun, uh, you could get sick or you could fall down, anything could happen. So then the king raised his offer. I will give you a uh, hundred paisas. La. The king was very kind and compassionate. <laughs> I will give you a hundred paisas. La. And then he say, the man said, I will take that money, but I still want to get that one. He said, I'll give you a thousand. La. Still, he wanted to get that one. So attached to it. Then I'll give you ten thousand. Still, he wanted to get that one that was hidden, right? <laughs> the one paisa, nothing compared to the 10,000 that still wanted it. Thank you, right? I will take all that you offer, huh? how many thousands are? Huh? But I still will go and take the one I have hidden too. Oh, this king uh, was thinking uh, he was quite stubborn and lack in wisdom. Uh. He couldn't let go that one. Uh. Is there no way I can save him from this stubbornness? Huh? So this stubbornness, no. Huh? So funny, isn't it? Huh? So, you know what the king said? Desperately, uh, the king raised his offer, offered more money and more and more money. Uh. But each time, uh, the water carrier insisted that he would still go and fetch his hidden treasure of one paisa. So the king in the end, uh, wow, he made that fantastic offer. Uh, incredible. I will give you half my kingdom. Right? How? If only you will agree to stop the idea of running now for one paisa. I don't want you to you know, run under the sun for that one paisa. But I will give you half the kingdom. You know? Wow. This water carrier. I agree. I agree. Uh, then uh, the king will say, oh, at last, I'm happy to have your agreement now. I don't have to uh, run uh, run there already. Right? So now, you will be the owner of half of my kingdom radio. Uh, so, so the king tell a drama. A drama is something like a crown. You, know? uh, you see, uh, you know, it will denote your pankat lah, that you are royalty and you know? see the others, they just uh, will wear ordinary turbans. So all hell the drama, drama, this is called the drama. Uh, to crown the water carrier, king of one half of the kingdom. Then the king asked him, Now friend, 
Tell me which half of the kingdom you choose to have. Uh, right? I told you, uh, uh, the city divided into northern part, right? And then southern, southern part, isn't it? Right? So now, the king was willing to release one half of the kingdom. So he asked, which half do you want? So the water carrier thought for a second, you know. He remembered that he had hidden, remember, hidden the one paisa near the northern gate, isn't it? Uh, near the northern gate. So which half? You know, he said, I want the northern half of the kingdom. Right? Just now he said that he had hidden the, uh, the paisa, the coin, at the northern half, isn't it? So now he wants that one. Uh, the king also uh, gave up already. Uh. And the people there all were laughing, were laughing. They were so attached to that coin or that so-called treasure. So the king said, Wow, you have won uh, the game again, uh, right? So, so the water carrier not only got half the kingdom, uh, but also his treasure of just one paisa. Now, of course, uh, there could be various interpretations of this in terms of the Dhamma or the moral value. Uh, Right, but uh, this teaches us certain important things of Dharma. Right, maybe he was simple minded, he didn't have the wisdom. So, the point running through uh, is what we call attachment. So, now we will look at the lesson. Ah, we look at the lesson. So, there are four Dharma points that I want to share with you. And you consider, so we reflect on the following. Right? This is speech at a higher level, right? So teachers, parents have no difficulty understanding the Dharma teachings. Uh. But for the students, secondary students to be easier, but for the primary students, I will try to make it easier so that you can understand your parents uh, can also follow. Now, what is the first Dharma lesson? Right? Hey, it's not working. Uh, it's jam, huh? What happened? So let us end the show first. Ah, now we launch this and see. Uh, perhaps uh, there's a technical hitch. So now we show this. Ah. ah, now it works, huh? Ah, so you see this alien, uh, this alien is giving the lessons, uh, uh, that why? The first thing is all things are impermanent. They are not truly ours. One day they will be separated from us. Now, that is a very important Dharma teaching. The Buddha taught this. All things won't last, right? Whether it's your money, whether it's your possession, right? Or friends, all these won't last. A time will come where they have to be separated. That is nature. But it does not mean that you don't use those things. You know, you can use those things, huh? That like you have your, you know, money, or you have your motorbike or car, or you have a good clothes to put. You use them, huh? In a wise way, lah, necessity. But you don't attach to them. Attach to them means, uh, who are you? You know, grabs at them, you know, so strongly, uh, They say, I must have this. You will be with me forever and ever. Uh, then you will give you suffering, uh, right? Because one day, you know, all will be separated from you. All of us will pass away one day, right? We can't bring anything with us, not even our body. We bring with us our mind, with the good karma, with the good dharma that we have learned. So that's why uh, it's important that we always learn the dharma and practice the dharma. Uh, so there's the first dharma lesson. So maybe this simple-minded person, he was so very attached, you know, right? Now, you see the second point? Do not attach to all worldly things. Uh, one day, this will cause us dukkha. Dukkha actually translates as suffering. That means uh, we can, uh, you have problems, uh, pain, uh, complete stress, suffering. Now, you see, there are some people that don't realize this. They attach to the thing so strongly. You know? I remember, you know, there was this uh, family friend of ours, uh, he and the uh, wife, uh, right? this man and the wife, they were living on their own. 
right? Quite old already, maybe 70, 80. You know what they were attached to? They were attached to the coconut tree outside the house, right? So whenever, you know, the coconut, uh, maybe ripen right now, be falling. Uh, so uh, then one day, there was heavy rain, you know, and the coconuts fell, you know. But they were so attached to the coconut. They say, Ayah, kare lang yaki la. You know, some people come and steal la. So they will, they will run out uh, to get the coconuts. They're so attached to the coconuts. Uh, so that is not wise, isn't it? Right? That is not wise. So uh, if you attach to things uh, without the wisdom, they can bring you suffering. Like, for example, this couple, you know, what happens if they fall in the rain, uh, you know, accidents, and then uh, they will get terrible suffering, isn't it? Many other things. Uh, like for example, you have a toy, when, uh, for example, something that you like, but sometimes accidents happen, and then the toy breaks. Now, if you understand, you say everything is impermanent, never mind, I can get repair, uh, repair it. You cannot, never mind, uh, let it go, isn't it? Otherwise, uh, you'll be suffering, uh, you cry and cry and cry and say, oh, yo, uh, uh, my, my toy, uh, no more already. It can happen, it's impermanent. So you see, very important, do not attach. Like for example, you might have uh, some children uh, attached to what, you know? Attached to ice cream. Uh, so uh, if they see uh, other people eating ice cream, so they must have the ice cream. If not, they will create a a big problem or trouble going to tantrums and sometimes the parents cannot afford also those expensive things like ice cream can be expensive so they are attached to it if you are able to get it okay if not okay also then be more peaceful isn't it so do not attach to all the only things which are impermanent you attach to it and you lose it or sometimes it gets separated from you wow then you suffer so this story, I wonder whether the man was so very attached to that one coin, right? Even though he already got half the kingdom, he was still thinking of that. It could be that he thought that it was uh, very sentimental to him, uh, he earned it. Uh, but then it would, be, it would be very foolish, isn't it? Because if anything happened to your coin, then he uh, will be miserable, isn't it? Right? You must learn to think wisely already. Uh, so all you... He has so much money already. In fact, you can even ask the workers uh, to take the coin uh, and give to the poor already, uh, isn't it? He doesn't have to go and run, run, run to that place and give. So uh, it's because uh, he is simple-minded and he doesn't have the wisdom. And these things can bring about suffering. Uh, because something happens, then you cannot accept it. Right? So that's the second Dharma point. The third one, craving. Craving means very strong desire, very strong wanting. Attaching and clinging. That means uh, you grasp at it. You cling at it. You don't want to let go of it. It is mine. I must have this. Right? This actually, according to Buddha's teaching, is the root cause of a person to be reborn again and again. And if you have very strong attachment to things or people and so on, you will be reborn. And according to the scriptures, this very strong craving attachment uh, will lead to not so good reverse. You will you may not be uh, reborn into happy states, you know. Oh, they say, wow, everything just like a hungry ghost always wanting things. Uh. So uh, some may be reborn as a hungry ghost. So never attach, never crave. You can get it uh, through the wise way, fine. But then remember, uh, you will pass. It will not last, right? So this is also a very important point. There are people uh, who are attached to so many worldly things, no? And when they become older, uh, they find it so difficult to pass away. Uh, Chan Dhamma Buddha uh, had given talks about cases, no? Right? Attached to their maybe possession or attached to their grandchildren or you know, some other people. So they cannot pass away because the mind is so attached, but the body is sick. The body is rotting already, or so some cases. So it's terrible, isn't it? So there will be great suffering. So from young, if you're able to, you know, realize this that attachment, craving, clinging, grasping, all these are, are not good mental states. Right? Ah. So then the fourth one is what you should practice. 
right? To learn the Dharma, to practice the Dharma. Then you know the things that wise people know and how the wise people live. They are peaceful, they're happy, right? they don't attach, right? they don't have that strong greed, right? wanting that thing right? to the extent if they don't have it, they feel so terrible. The wise people don't have that sort of mental state to me of uh, strong greed, you know, craving, attaching, clinging on to things, my partner. They already learned to let go already because they know all these things are impermanent, right? They come to our lives, we use them for a certain period and then after that, they'll be separated from us, isn't it? So when there's no attachment, the mind is peaceful, contented, happy, joyful, calm, all the good qualities, then you really are living well. Huh? So you understand the Dharma. So it's this letting go. So this story, well, in a way, is also uh, pointing very clearly to the attachment, right? Uh, but anyway, it's just a story. The Jataka story may, uh, may not be true. It's supposed to be reflecting on the Buddha's previous life and so on. But uh, most scholars think that they are just stories, right? So, but these stories, uh, the important thing uh, is that we can learn good moral messages, Dharma messages from this. And uh, that's what we should do uh, to get the Dharma messages from the Jataka story. They are quite interesting, the Jataka story. I have given quite a number of you. Now there will be more to come, right? So we have come to the end. So we make this aspiration. What is the aspiration? That you grow in compassion and wisdom. The practice of the Dharma is very important. I think the king uh, shows these two qualities, isn't it? He is very, uh, he is very compassionate. You know? He's so kind uh, to give so much to the poor man, isn't it? Right? It's a story, uh, but he's trying to tell you about compassion. And the king also has wisdom. You know, he has wisdom. He says, uh, of course, uh, he's not so wise when I'm giving you a lot of money already. Not so wise now to run, right? In the hot sun, you may fall sick, and then uh, I'll be causing trouble to your wife. Uh, and that's wisdom, you see. But this man are still attached to it, and still he wants to go and get it, you see. So then you make the aspiration that you will walk the noble eightfold path so that you will attain enlightenment, liberation, the car, which means you'll be free completely. No more coming into the suffering world, and you will be having the perfect, right? Peace, happiness, freedom, and that is Nibbana, right? So we have come to the end. So I thank you all for your patience, endurance, right? To spend time to listen to this presentation. I also thanks uh, to the parents and grandparents and the teachers of Sunday school who have followed this presentation. So we hope more people can learn the good Dharma, especially the younger ones, so that they can grow in the Dharma, especially growing in compassion and wisdom. So to end this presentation, as usual, we we'll say sadhu. Sadhu means excellent. Huh? So in Buddhist uh, term, excellent means whenever you do something uh, very uh, praiseworthy, something wholesome, or you see somebody doing a good act, uh, so many things, uh, good things, uh, then you say sadhu, sadhu. That means excellent, excellent, excellent. So you have received merit by listening to so much time. So let us end by saying sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May all be well and peaceful. Uh, take care.